Lesson 3.1, Solving Systems of Equations by Graphing. So let's just graph it. Graph this, 2x minus 3, 1, 2, 3, up to over 1, and do it more than once. We end up doing it more often than that, but we'll get back to that in a second. And then graph this one, and I'm going to cheat and use different colors, up to down 3 over 1 so there we go and where do they intersect? they intersect at the point 1 comma negative 1 and you can tell if you graph it carefully that that works because you go down 3 over 1 up 2 over 1 and they'll end up right on top of each other so they intersect at 1, negative 1, but I don't know for sure that they intersect there. Well, we need the original equations, y equals 2x minus 3, and y equals negative 3x plus 2. And we test them. Does negative 1 equal 2 times 1 minus 3, negative 1 equal negative 1? Yes. And does negative 1 equal negative 3 times 1 plus 2? And yes. So this is our solution. So you can see when it's pretty easy equations and they're in slope intercept form, you really don't have any problems. It's not a very challenging problem at all. However, they're not always in slope intercept form and they don't always work out nicely. So let's try another problem. This one's a little trickier to graph. We're here, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. I'm going to stop there. If I have to, I'll come back and work on it some more. So negative 5 halves, about here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. It would appear they intersect here at 3, comma 2. So we have to make sure that works. Now I did a very complicated check last time. This time I'm going to do it a lot quicker. 3 plus 2 times 2 equals 3 plus 4 is 7. Checks. Here we have 3 times 3 minus 2 times 2. 9 minus 4 is 5. Checks. So it looks like we did it right. Even with fractions, you just have to graph carefully. So, continuing on, try it again. Find the intersection for these. One of them is already set up, so I will graph that first. And now we have to do a little algebraic manipulation, and we'll graph the other one. And you're probably recognizing right away that, hmm, something seems amiss. We have parallel lines. So 
So do we have no solutions? No, none whatsoever. We look at this situation and we give it a, a specific name and there's going to be several of them. We call this an inconsistent system. It actually pops up in the real world fairly often where you realize we have a system that we have variables that we're manip manipulating but we can't solve it. There's no way to do it. It just won't work. So this one we'll try again, negative x minus 4. Looks familiar. And then I'm not going to bother graphing it. It's the same line. So we actually have solutions. It's what we call consistent, but we call it dependent. Now you cannot put any number you want in, but there are an infinite number of solutions. And what that means is anything that works, pick 0 for x, y equals negative 0, minus 4, y equals negative 4. 0, negative 4 works. Well, it's also going to work in this equation, too. So you can pick any random number, throw it in, get another answer out, and it'll work in both. So there's an infinite number of solutions. You're basically working with the same data and didn't realize it. This happens too, and it's an actually pretty interesting situation because people didn't realize that they're they're doing the same problem twice, and then when they graph it, they realize, okay, it didn't work. So three possibilities: we get one solution. We call that independent and consistent. We could have infinite number of solutions. We call that consistent and dependent. And we could have no solutions. And we just call that inconsistent. Look for your parallel slopes. You see parallel slopes? You're either dependent or inconsistent. If they're not parallel, then you're going to have a solution. That's it. Good luck.